What's up, everybody? It's Groovinator from RaidersOfLostFlicks.com, and I am up early on Monday because I wanted to see what kind of news was going to come down about Terminator. Yes, I'm obsessed with this movie. Yes, I went to go see it at the, the cinema on Halloween night, and I did my review, and as I said before, it's doing very well. But as I predicted, there's going to be lots of excuses coming out down the pipeline as to why the movie did not perform well over the weekend. I'm hearing reports that it did not make near what they projected to be. I'll get into that a little bit more later in this video. First thing I want to get to, I put out a video yesterday saying I wanted everybody to go to my website right here and vote for what you think the excuse will be as to why the movie failed. And I wanted to reveal those results and get this out of the way. Thank you so much for everybody that went to the website and voted, by the way. I really appreciate it. So here are the results. If this will load, there we go. All right. Overwhelming vote comes to alt-right racist misogynist troll campaign. And I, I think that's fair because how many times have we heard that? Of going back to Ghostbusters 2016 and, and Star Wars The Last Jedi... We don't, we don't just like a movie because it sucks. We don't like it because there's some insidious political agenda reason as to why we don't like something. Every movie that comes out is perfect, you know? Studios never make mistakes. Can You you know that? You know that all movies are perfect? They, they never just suck? If you don't like a movie, it's because there's some political agenda that you have. It's because you don't like strong women. You don't like somebody of another color. Or, or you don't like somebody because of their sexual orientation. Did you know that? That's what it is. That's what we get accused of all the time, right? None of that shit is true at all. Whatsoever, alright? <laughs> Especially going back to Terminator, where Sarah Connor was the main focus of the story and killed two Terminators. Spoiler alert! In two movies, killed two Terminators. We watched her go from being a waitress to a warrior, and we loved every fucking minute of it. Just saying, all right? This movie, I saw it. It sucks not because of the politics. It's just a really, really bad, lazy first draft script that feels like it was written by Ryan Johnson. So... Anyways, I, I have to agree with that. <laughs> it's got four for Tim Miller and got a couple for too many producers, too many cooks in the kitchen. That's personally what I think it is. If you wanted to know my vote, I, I, I wanted to hold that off until today. But I think is just there was there was just too many expectations for this movie and a lot of producer uh, invo you know intervention. What's the word I'm looking for? You know, producers stepping in and taking over and saying, we need this, we need that, we need that, we need that. And that's when these movies start losing focus and they become a designed by committee movie. And this feels very much designed by committee. Now, a lot of the critics are out there saying, you know, this is the best uh, Terminator movie since the originals. That is true, but that's a very low hurdle to get over. Personally, I like Salvation more than this one because even though Salvation didn't turn out well, it had good intentions. It at least took us to a different future. We were at least moving away from this Sarah Connor bit for a little while. You know, we were focusing on John Connor. Honestly, this, t this franchise just needs to die. It needs to go away and be gone for a while. But, but as much as I love the robots, you know, I love my Terminator stuff, okay, if you want to keep this going, move away from the Sarah Connor timeline. Just try it for a while. Let's 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 have some other characters. You know what I mean? We want to see more future type stuff. So, anyways, enough of that. Let's move on to the next thing. Terminator: Dark Fate's controversial twist was James Cameron's idea. Now, so many people have been firing off at me in the comments of my uh, YouTube channel saying, Oh, no, 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 Tim Miller and James Cameron, they're going to save this. And I kept telling everybody, how big do you think James Cameron's involvement actually is? I'm telling you right now, I'm calling it. James Cameron probably has a huge, huge Me Too case that's above his head. And somebody's probably threatening him with it. And they see potential to make money. Because James Cameron is so out front about women empowerment lately that it's, it's almost cringy. Have you guys seen his extras on the Alita videos? Different kinds of competitors right. speeding well, around the track. I love that you're this super smart engineer and you and you run these teams. You're you know you're like a like a businesswoman and you're you're just large and in charge of this high tech high tech situation. You know, I mean, there's, there's these interesting female sort of prototypes in this yeah. movie. And that's one thing that I think that. 
you know, you are so rightly celebrated for are the roles that you've created for women and the opportunities you've given women, um, these sort of iconic women characters in cinema. Thank you. Um, and I think that's, you've done that again here. You know, you all have everyone involved in making and the no film. And be no better time to do it. No better, well, every time is a great time to do right. it. And now, yeah, right. I think there's um, timeliness, you know, in the sense of female empowerment about this film, and people seem to be leaning into that and embracing it, which is which is good. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's one of the I mean, he's really just, like, flag-waving about it. And, you know, he's had some famously bad relationships with some of his spouses, and he's also been known to be very verbally abusive on the set. So somebody has some dirt on this guy, and James Cameron will sign off on anything. And honestly, his word means precisely spit to me anyway. But hey, let's get into this article, and we'll, we'll deal with that a little bit more. So uh, I love the idea of shocking the audience and doing the unexpected. Now, going forward, this is going to be full spoilers if you haven't seen the movie already or if you're planning to see it. Hit that like button on the way out, put this in your queue for later, and then after you see it, come back and watch it. Because we're going to go into full uh, spoiler mode, alright? So, Terminator Dark Fate producer James Cameron has revealed that that controversial twist at the beginning of the film was totally his idea. As promised by Sarah Connor actress, actress for Linda Hamilton, the opening certainly shocked fans when a young John Connor achieved with digital wizardry was shot dead by a stray Terminator after the events of T2 Judgment Day. A stray Terminator. Here, boy, here, boy, you stray. Let me call the dog catcher. We got stray Terminators running around. But it it's a decision that didn't sit too well with some fans, but Cameron, who directed the first two films in the franchise, admits he was keen to pull the rug out. Quote, pull the rug out from underneath the audience. I said, let's take him out in the first 30 seconds, Cameron told the Los Angeles Times. They're sitting in a pizzeria. A Terminator walks in and blows him away. You're one minute into the movie. Everybody went, really? You want to do this? I said, yes. Fuck you, asshole. You pull the rug out from underneath the entire construct that's been going on for the last three decades. He added, I love the idiom of put your characters in place. They at least want to be, and I love the idea of shocking the audience and doing the unexpected. There you go, James Cameron, Connor, <laughs> John Connor fans blame James Cameron. Well, that's fine. You know, and, and this may or may not be true. He may or may have been coerced into saying this. Either way, as much as I love those first two movies, thank you, James Cameron, but also, F you. Seriously, I am so tired of you coming out and saying we should go see these movies, they're as good as the original. You know, James Cameron, if I remember correctly, didn't even want to do a sequel to the first Terminator movie. He had to do it in order to raise money to do... He wanted to work on Titanic, because he had done The Abyss, and that was a huge success. He wanted to do Titanic, which needed loads of money, and I think the, uh, the prerequisite of that was he had to make Terminator 2. Now, Terminator 2 wound up being a fantastic movie and elevates the story and, in my opinion, surpasses the original. As much as I love the original Terminator movie, Terminator 2 has so much heart to it. I mean, there's really a lot of emotion and heart, and I love it, all right? None of the other movies in that franchise have been able to capture that, and it shows. And each time they do it, it's just a, it's an excuse or some kind of lame attempt to try to recreate that moment. None of the movies have ever successfully been able to do that. Moving on to the next thing. Now, this is what I predicted on my channel. So many of you came out and said, Oh, no, no, James Cameron and Tim Miller are going to save this movie, and you're just, you're just spouting hate just to start some kind of campaign. No, I predicted these things were going to happen. I'm not some kind of a genius. I'm not a clairvoyant. It's just you can tell in its marketing that this this really didn't have a lot to run on. There's no story after Terminator 2. I can't stress that enough. There's no reason to do another movie unless you move away from the John Connor, Sarah Connor dynamic. They never want to do that. They just keep wanting to recreate moments from the first two movies. We're already bored with that. It's been like 30 years since this come out. Move on. Do something different. I dare you. At least Salvation tried. They might not have pulled it off very well, but at least it had a different idea going in. Terminator Dark Fate on track to lose $120 million after box office bomb. <laughs> box office bomb, ladies and gentlemen. This movie was <laughs> predicted to make $40 million. 
Terminator Dark Fate is on pace to lose $120 million, putting the future of the franchise in limbo. This iteration sees young Mexican woman Danny targeted by an advanced model of Terminator sent from the future to kill her and is deafened by Sarah Connor and cybernetically enhanced warrior Grace. Since its release in 1984, the Terminator has been on the inevitable aspect of cultural landscape lines. Moments and ideas from the film so persuasive that the kids encounter references to them before the actual films themselves. It made a star out of Arnold Schwarzenegger after Conan the Barbarian made people take notice of him and is ultimately responsible for kickstarting his career. In 1991, Terminator 2 adjusted for inflation, the 10th highest grossing R-rated movie of all time, is held up as one of the greatest sequels ever made. While the liquid metal effects the T-1000 utilize what was then the most advanced CGI techniques in existence. According to the report published in THR, Dark Face U.S. opening weekend took a mere $29 million. Ouch! Added to the takes from other territories, including a similarly disappointing debut in the increasingly important Chinese market and countries where it was released last week, the film's current box office tally stands at $123.6 million, which doesn't even match the film's budget. Estimated is somewhere between 185 and 196 million. <sighs> to simply break it even, it's estimated the film needs to pull in a further 357 million, which, after such a lackluster opening, seems highly unlikely. And as a result, production company Skydance reportedly has no plans to follow up the film. Right now, Dark Fate is on track to lose 120 million. Well, there you go, all right? The Chinese market has a term that they call baizu. If I'm mispronouncing that, let me know in the comments. Baizu refers to social justice politics. They don't like that over there. This movie has been nothing in its marketing but SJW politics, social justice politics, identity politics. They've used that to try to sell this film to an audience, and I think by using that, they wound up pushing audiences away because people are just getting tired of it. That's why Joker is going to make a billion dollars and this one is going to lose them 120 million. People have spoken. They don't want this anymore. They just want good stories. CGI isn't going to do it. Social politics and identity politics ain't going to do it. We want a good story. Terminator Dark Fate does not have a good story. It has a very recycled and generic first draft version of a story to movies that you've already seen. If you, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you stare at the poster long enough, you can figure out the entire plot of the movie. It's that weak. Anyways, I have a very big announcement that I'm going to make. The, the announcement is going to be made not here, though. It's going to be made on ETEP's channel tonight at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. ETEP Akulian is the place to be reviews. I'm putting that link in the description. I have an announcement for two projects that I'm working on. One of them will be on this channel. The other one will be on this channel, too. But I want you to make sure that you show up to that show and, and get ready for that announcement. I'll also make that announcement on this channel too, so make sure you ding that bell so that when these videos go live, you get that right away. Very exciting stuff. I'm looking forward to doing this and, and working on these projects. Like I said, that announcement will be tonight. I don't want to put the cart ahead of the horse, so make sure you're there and make sure you're subscribed to my channel as well. You guys have yourselves a groovy day, and this is the Groovinator signing out. Peace. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it somewhat entertaining. Please remember to depress that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content. Make sure you hit that bell icon so you'll be the first to know when new content is published. Please visit RaidersOfLostFlix.com for more hilarious entertainment and links to all of our social media platforms. Also, consider supporting us on Patreon. As little as a dollar a month supports our worldwide digs for more Lost Flicks. Thank you and have a groovy day.